The Amazing Quest of Ernest Bliss from 1936 was an entertaining Cary Grant film. You know, you just can't go wrong with Cary Grant movies. The story takes place in London, and here Cary Grant plays this bored socialite, the well-dressed title character Ernest Bliss. And like usual, it's Cary Grant dressed to the nines. He's this wealthy character, but he's bored. So he goes to see his doctor, this Sir James Alroyd, played by Peter Gawthorne who diagnoses him as having too much money. Ah, if only we could all suffer with that illness. Well, anyhow, the doctor tells him that the cure is to go and live for a year with only making a few dollars a week, or a few pounds, as this is set in England. Now, Ernest seems annoyed about this, and this leads to him engaging in a bet of 50,000 pounds with the Sir James character, that he can survive for a year and support himself with what he earns and not touch any of his millions. So that's the premise of the film and it's a really kind of a funny one. So this character, Ernest Bliss, he heads to Stepney Green and rents an attic room. And right away, he's not doing too well financially. He's falling behind in his rent. But the landlady, Mrs. Heath, played by actress Marie Wright, seems sympathetic to him. And after applying everywhere, Bliss finally gets a job selling Alpha Stoves, working for Mr. Masters, played by John Turnbull, and goes door to door selling stoves. Yeah, you know this is an old film when you're dealing with a traveling stove salesman. Well, the sales aren't going so well for him, and he finds out from Mr. Masters' secretary, Francis, who's played by the lovely Mary Bryan, that his business is in a lot of trouble. So, because there's no sales going on, he decides to take 500 pounds of his own money, not for his own benefit, so he's still following the conditions of his bet. And he uses his own money to do a public free meal service cooked on these stoves. And, you know, the public is totally into it, and this leads to a particular buyer who wants to buy a hundred of them. So, Mr. Masters is thrilled with the offer he wants for Bliss to be his partner, but Bliss has to resign. I guess this would throw off the conditions of the bet, I think. So he leaves the job, but he does ask Francis out to dinner first, and it's a cute little romance that they have going, and a very nice chemistry together as well. So Bliss starts a new job, this time as a chauffeur, and as fate would have it, he winds up being the one to drive the old doctor character from earlier. Yeah, a little coincidental, but whatever, we'll go with it. Now, initially, the doctor doesn't even recognize Bliss, but when he brings him home finally, well, Bliss reveals who he is and talks about how already seven months have passed by. Hmm. Now, what follows next is a little bit more silliness as this character Dorrington hires Bliss to come to the address at 11 Regents Park Gate, flat number six, which just happens to be Bliss's own place. Now he hasn't been living there, remember he's doing this whole bet agreement. So his old valet apparently lost heavily betting on the dogs. And now the place is rented to this character, Dorrington. Dorrington was played by actor Leon M. Lyon. And he's noticed, looking at Bliss, the resemblance that he has to the actual real-life Bliss character the previous owner of the place. Yes, the chauffeur resembles the guy Bliss. It's kind of silly. Well, Dorrington has practiced forging Bliss's signature and wants him to go and cash a check, pretending to be Bliss to get some of his own money. And in return, this Dorrington guy will give him a third of it. Well, at the bank, Bliss goes along with this, gets the cashier to just give him some blank pieces of paper and an envelope, then returns to his old place, and he straight up reveals to this Dorrington guy and his henchman who he is. But they don't believe it. Well, a big fist fight breaks out. Bliss and the henchman guy, they duke it out, and Dorrington just slips away with this worthless envelope of paper checks. Well, finally, the servant Klaus returns, drunk, and bops the henchman on the head with the bottle. Bliss forgives him, and all is well. Well, next, Francis gets a job with this Mr. Montague, and he's something of a sleazeball, and we can tell that he wants more than just a secretary out of Francis. Well, Bliss, thankfully, is there 
again, coincidentally, as the chauffeur. And he takes Francis away, but not before smushing some caviar in this guy's face. Yeah, great stuff here. But the boss isn't happy about it, and he is fired from his job as a chauffeur. Well, Bliss doesn't care. But when his mechanic friend, Bill Bronson, played by actor Hal Gordon, stands up for him, he gets fired too. Well, Bliss turns around, goes off, buys the company, and orders his old boss fired to be replaced with Bill. Ah, classy stuff there. Well, as we near the end of the film, Frances is visited by her mother with the bad news that her sister will die soon unless she's taken to a special resort in Switzerland. Well, Francis sadly resigns to marry the master's guy from earlier in the film to get the money that she needs. Well, can Bliss help her out in time? Will he win the condition of the bet? Will he and Francis be able to finally get together? Well, watch this one for yourself. And, you know, it was a silly but sweet little film with some laughs. And let's be honest, regardless of the story, if it's got Cary Grant, it's going to be good. So a few closing thoughts. The film is actually a remake of a 1920 film, The Amazing Quest of Mr. Ernest Bliss, which was based on a 1919 novel, The Curious Quest by E. Phillips Oppenheim. The film was also called by different names. There's Amazing Adventure and also Romance and Riches. And you know, honestly, there was not much more I could find in terms of trivia about this film. In fact, I even looked through a couple books on Cary Grant, and there's just not much said about this film. It's just a fun, somewhat silly, romantic comedy with Cary Grant, so you really can't go wrong. In any case, The Amazing Quest of Ernest Bliss from 1936 was a fun, old movie. It's worth checking out. <laughs> 